So today I wanna to talk about these pain in the ass piercings that I got. This is kind of like an update. And then also I wanna talk about how I'm dealing with these issues. Like these piercings, they need a lot of TLC. They require a lot of my time and my effort. And that's why I say they're a pain in the ass. Now, like when I got them, like I know piercings are a lot of work, but previously when I used to get piercings, uh, it was when I was a lot younger, before I had kids, a husband, a family. And now that I have all that like piercings, it's like, it's just different on me right now. And piercings are, trouble <laughs> they're like they're like really time consuming and i find that like i just don't want to be bothered with cleaning them these piercings for one cartilage takes forever to heal I clean it like twice a day especially if they're still draining which these are they're all still draining still healing you know in their own right like they're all you know doing their thing so we're gonna start on the right side first these two helixes i still have the healing bars in here so they're longer than they're longer than they should be so there's room for swelling and whatnot so they snag on my daughter's hair they snag on my hair and not too long ago this bottom one it snagged on my daughter's hair and completely ripped out of my ear it tore out of my ear and luckily I had a spare ball at home. So I found the jewelry piece on the floor and I put the new ball in. And that pissed me off because one, I know it must've hurt my daughter. That kind of yanking on her scalp, like I know it must've hurt. Although she didn't really say anything, she didn't cry or anything surprisingly, but like that just irritated me that I hurt my daughter in second it hurt me and it set me back in my healing time. And so now it's gonna take even longer for it to heal. As long as I don't irritate them, like as long as I don't snag them on anything, they do really good. But once I snag them on stuff, then they start draining again a little bit. Other than that, they're healing really good. I do like that they're really easy to clean. This top one up here started growing like this extra skin um, and it looked, it looked like a bump, but then it looked like a little flap of skin that was trying to like cover up the piercing. I noticed that it would get dry and scaly looking and I would like pick at it, trying to flake it off. And so I just started putting alcohol on it, 50% alcohol. So I would just put the alcohol on it as often as I remembered. And that piece, it just dried up more and more and eventually just flaked off. And that bump is, yeah, that bump is gone. It's clean, it's smooth, it's flat, it's totally gone. And then this conch was like, it hardly hurt. Like I barely felt when when I got this conch. It's healed up really, really nice. I haven't had any problems with any extra skin growth or bumps or keloids or anything. It's pretty easy to clean. This is one of my favorite piercings. It, it's still draining. I haven't cleaned them today yet, so there's some crusties behind there but it's all good. It's healing good, it's doing what it needs to do. So then I have this tragus here. This is one of my older piercings. I got this piercing 17 years ago and I had a piercing up there 17 years ago. And this one was like really, really low maintenance. Um, it healed up really good. I didn't get no keloids or nothing on that. And I have a new jewelry piece that I'm gonna put in there pretty soon. So next, I wanna talk about my nose. I have three piercings in my nose here. Um, this one with the hoop, I got that when I was 17. So um, I've had this the longest, about 18 years. So this is the second one I got this year. With this piercing, this was the first time I ever had a bump, blister, pimple, whatever, any kind of bump growing around my piercing. I've never experienced that before, so it kind of threw me, kind of took me back. I wasn't sure what to do. And then the skin started growing up over the ball that I had in here. At first, she put a ball in there, this really tiny ball, and the ball was like sinking into the piercing and skin was growing around it, trying to like cover it up. So I kept putting alcohol around that um, flap of skin that was growing to dry it out like same way I did with this. So I kept, well I still, I keep putting alcohol on it to try to keep it dry and eventually it's gonna flake off. Some of it has already flaked off. So 
I'm moving in the right direction. I don't put the alcohol on every day, but you know, when I remember, sometimes I mix alcohol with peroxide. I took out that screwball that the piercer put in and I put this piercing in that I already had. So this is the piece that I've had for a while. And notice how large it is and how flat it is. I think that's a four millimeter. So um, I put this in to kind of act like a healing disc to kind of push the, the bumps down to like train my skin to like not grow anything there. And it worked. So I made sure this flat part was laying right on top of the bump as much as I could. And then, so then the bump went down, but then two more whiteheads or pimples or whatever popped up on the other side. So then I took some tweezers and I just, cause this is hard to move. I took some tweezers and I move it down this way and uh, it helped with those bumps too. And then back on the other side, another whitehead blister, whatever started growing on the other side. So then I screw it, screwed it, moved it back around the other side. So like, I just, I don't know what's going on with that piercing. Like I, ha I never had that problem before. So I'm doing the best I can and this flat, a jewelry piece has helped tremendously. So currently, those two little white heads that form here, they're like, for the most part, flat. You know how you have a white head and you burst it and that little white, tiny, um, that white little pustule comes out, it's hard and it's white. I can see the, the tiny little white head pustules right underneath there and I need to extract them but I can't do it with the jewelry piece in and I can't take the piece out because it's still healing so so what I do is I take this extractor this is a pimple bump whatever extractor that you use for your skin and so I take it has two different ends this one is looks like this and this side is more flat i don't know if you notice but this one is flatter so i take this time to time and i'll like i'll try to extract like slide it try to push the whitehead pustules out um but it's not working because that jewelry piece is in the way so i'm gonna have to wait till this fully heals up so i can take this jewelry piece out and i can extract them the right way. For now, I'm pretty satisfied with where I'm at now because it looks so much better than it was. I have a tiny bit of hyperpigmentation there, which I'm not worried about because I have some cream for that and it's like hardly noticeable. And this piercing and this jewelry piece helps cover that up too. So when the same thing happened with this third nose piercing that I have and she put, she put a hoop in and even with the hoop, skin started growing up and out over the jewelry piece, like trying to cover it up again. And uh, I got a bump here as well. So I use the same technique that I did with the other one. So this is a piece that I already had. I took the, the nose hoop out that she put in and I put this in to act like, um, to act like a healing disc and it's working just fine. It's laying right on top of the bump and it's laying right on top of that skin that was growing out and it's like pushing, mashing it down. It's like telling my body like, oh, we can't exit here, I think. <laughs> so the only thing about these jewelry pieces is that it's more difficult to really clean the piercing. And so I just take a Q-tip and I take my time and I wiggle in there. I also use my toothbrush and I use my Dove bar soap and get it um, nice and soapy on my toothbrush. And I just kind of like nudge in here and brush around and those bristles get in there and they clean really good. And so far this technique is working because last night I accidentally snatched this out in the shower. I didn't want to take it out, but since I accidentally snatched it out of my nose, I just took the time to examine it and I looked and the skin was nice and smooth, no skin growth, no bump, nothing. And so I put it back in. So I'm just sharing what I'm doing to combat the issues I've had with my piercings. I'm not gonna recommend what I'm doing to deal with the issues from my piercing, but I'm just sharing because, you know, a lot of people are having the same issues that I've had with my piercings. And um, you might be curious how other people are dealing with it, but I just wanna make it clear that I'm not recommending this stuff for anyone. So moving on to this side, 
So this one right here is the anti-trigus. This one started growing skin as well. It, it was a nice big flap of skin right up against this ball here. So I'm doing the same thing that I did with these other piercings. I'm putting 50% alcohol on it as often as I, I feel like it. Like I'm not, I'm not on like a specific regimen when I do this. I just do it like when I remember to do it. So I put alcohol on a Q-tip and I just, I rub it there and get all around it and I'll just hold it there. I'll just hold the, the Q-tip with the alcohol on for a few seconds. I do the same thing around here with the alcohol and that flap of skin is gone. That flap of skin peeled off. Um, yeah, and from what I can tell, I don't have a bump there either. Cause there was a bump that was starting to form. Like it was getting real fat and puffy around there where that skin was growing and now it's gone. So unfortunately on that bottom piece, a couple of days ago, I noticed what I think is a little keloid. but it's looking that way, it's looking like keloid. It's hardly noticeable, it's kind of hiding behind this ball here. Um, I'm not sure what to do about keloids, I don't know. And then same thing on this side. So this is a snug. So on this side and this side both, it started growing these bumps, these, these big fat, juicy bumps and at first i thought they were keloid but then as i was cleaning around them i noticed that they were pretty soft and then i also thought like it's too soon to have keloids like they're still draining they're still healing it's too soon to have keloids so then i started poking around them and this blood and pus started coming out like it was getting trapped inside there and so i was mad because all that time i could have been like cleaning it you know trying to get them to drain good and I just left them alone because I was being all, you know, gentle with them. But so once I realized that they were blisters, I pushed, you know, I extracted as much blood and puss as I could and I cleaned them out really good. And so this one in here scabbed up really good. I didn't want the scab there because it was still draining, right? And I felt like the scab was going to keep the, the, the stuff from draining even more. So... Um, consistently I kept cleaning around this and cleaning around it and the scab would flake off along with a lot of pus so I just kept cleaning it not worrying about a scab not worrying about a scar or anything I'm just cleaning it the scab kept coming off but I didn't care so now so right now is looking much better much flatter I haven't cleaned them yet today so I see a little flaky stuff in there but um, but yeah, so the bump has gone way down. It's not completely flat, but it's a lot flatter than it was. I'm just gonna keep working on that, keep putting alcohol on it, and we'll see what happens. The same thing here. This was a real fat, juicy bump, and I extracted it. I used the Q-tips and I used this extraction tool here to press. I kind of slide or, or you know wiggle and and press around it, try to get the, whatever's in there, get it out. Um, but it looks really promising. The one on the inside, uh, I think I'll be able to get that flat, like totally flat by the time I'm done with it. This one was doing the same thing. It has a weird little bump blister thing. So I made it drain out and I'm putting alcohol on it and I can't tell yet if it's going to keloid or not. Cause I notice if I don't use alcohol, it gets oily and it looks greasy and it looks gunky and it feels like the skin and the bumps thrive really good and they just want to grow like i prefer using alcohol because it keeps it dry and it heals better when it's when it's dry i haven't tried using like a 70 or 90 percent alcohol I might get better results if i use the 70 or 90 percent alcohol i might try that but for now i'm just using 50 percent so for this conch in here I'm gonna keep using the alcohol. The bump that was growing here has gone down since I started putting alcohol on it and it's looking better.
I mean, I could be wrong, but that looks like it's going to keloid. But it's, it's still too soon to tell because it's still draining. Like I shied away from alcohol because I kept reading and hearing that alcohol is bad for your piercings. It's too much too soon, it's too much drying for your piercings. But for me personally, in my experience, alcohol has helped tremendously. So then this jewelry piece came out, this ball came out and the jewelry piece came out completely. We were out of town, we were traveling to Phoenix, Arizona. Luckily this came out in the middle of the afternoon while I was eating. I caught the jewelry piece and I was able to put it in and go to a shop right in town, right in Phoenix. I found a shop that was open because it was like three o'clock in the afternoon and it was perfect because this could have came out while we were at a gas station, while I was in the bathroom somewhere. It could have came out in the car. It could have came out at three o'clock in the morning where everything is closed. Um, I could have lost the whole jewelry piece all together and it would have closed. It could have been a very bad ending for this, but luckily it came out at the perfect time. I found a local shop that was nearby and she put this ball on here it's the same barbell that came out but she just gave me a new ball right there the way that worked out was like amazing this one came out as well but i was at home so i stuck a barbell in here that i had at home and i went to the shop and it turns out that the bar came out but it was tucked away inside my ear and i couldn't see it i couldn't feel it it hurt more for her to put this back in than it did when i first got it done that's like the worst thing that can happen when you have a fresh piercing is that the jewelry piece comes out and then you have to get it put back in and then it might start swelling and it's like it's a pain in the ass so i got lucky with these two right here other than that this hasn't given me any trouble no bumps no weird skin growth no blisters nothing only thing i don't like about it is that I can't see back here. I can't see back here and I can't get in here to clean as good as I would like. But luckily, I mean, I guess I'm cleaning it good enough because I haven't had any problems with it. This is a surface tray, guys. This one is super, super low maintenance. It hasn't come out yet. It didn't swell much at all. It did not hurt hardly at all. Like I hardly felt the prick when she put this in. This piercing was amazing. It was so quick and easy. The maintenance is super easy. It's It doesn't drain much at all. This is like probably my favorite one. So I still have the healing bar in. As you can see, it's a bit long. So after this is done healing, I'm gonna put something else in here. Maybe a shorter barbell or maybe a hoop. I'm not sure. This thing here, what is this called? This is a... I don't know if it's because the color of the jewelry piece that I have, but I forget that I have this in. This color just, it blends right in with my skin. But anyway, so this one is completely healed up. But I realized like I still have to clean it. I felt like I was getting this pretty good when I washed my face, but I realized that I wasn't because one time I kept smelling something. I kept smelling something like, um, um, like toe jam or something i don't know but i was smelling something funky for a few days and i kept getting a whiff of it and i didn't know where it was coming from so i would swipe behind my ears you know i'm like okay no my ears are good i cleaned my other piercings really good and it turned out it was this like i wasn't cleaning it good like i have to get a q-tip and clean around it like washing my face is not good enough like i have to like clean it like I do the other one so but this one is so low maintenance it hasn't given me any trouble and I forget that it's in it doesn't snag like every now and then every now and then it'll snag if I'm like getting crazy with the chips and salsa or something I don't know for the most part I forget this is even here I had an Ashley piercing here but I chipped my tooth on it like seriously chipped it like had to go to the dentist and have them fill it in and then I bit down on it again after I chipped my tooth and I was like, no, fuck that. And I took it out. I needed a nine millimeter bar. 10 was too long. I was biting on it. Eight was too short. It was like digging into my lip. And so I just took it out. So that's it. I'm, I'm pretty much done talking about my piercings. I don't have anything else to say. All right, so thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on and on about my my beloved piercings. I love piercings. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.